Brent here, the Bring Your Own Tools, and on today's episode, if you want to learn how we installed and fabricated our own sliding gate for our deck that's also connected to our loft net, we'll keep on watching. Let's start it. Now you might be wanting a sliding gate system for a number of different reasons, but for our project, it is because we installed a loft net adjacent to our deck. Now, if you haven't checked that one out, please do so because it's quite entertaining. However, we need a sliding gate for this amazing loft net. Now, obviously this is our deck railing. However, we took it apart and we're now gonna make it into a slided gate opening. Specifically, this is just cedar planks with some galvanized mesh wire, which is heavy duty. We're also gonna be using galvanized piping with our same eye screws that we used on the previous video for our loft net. So let's get started. Now, for some reason, if you can't use your own deck railing system or if it doesn't look like this, don't worry about it. You can always build it out pretty easily with some minimal materials like cedar planking, which I always suggest because it's better when considering woods that do well in elements such as rain, which living in Seattle, we get plenty of. At this point in time, I just wanted to beef up the railing itself and therefore I'm using some stainless steel brackets for each corner just to give it a little bit more stability and strength. Now there are a few different types of deck sliding kits available, however they're expensive and they just didn't fit my style on this deck, which is why I wanted to do something that was creative, that was functional, as well as inexpensive. Now specifically, you can't get more inexpensive than the fact that I already had these eye screws readily available because I had some extras laying around from our loft net. But if you don't have these, just know that the inner diameter is approximately one inch because we're using three quarter inch pipe. You only need six of these eye screws for this gate system. And if you don't have these already, I will leave a link in the description box below where you can actually purchase these products. The galvanized pipe that I'm using is 48 inches long and therefore I make a mark on the far end and bring it in just a tad bit because I want those threads to go past the eye screw and therefore I can install my end caps on both sides of the pipe. That fully secures the pipe in place and I'm only hand tightening these end caps because I want them easily removable later on if need be. As a quick side note, if you did watch the previous video about how to install a loft net, I hand tightened all of these ice screws with a screwdriver, every single last one of them. However, a viewer informed me that I can actually use an Allen wrench to tighten the ice screws down, as you can see, and it worked much better and I wish I did that previously, so just note to self. As for the bottom of the gate, I decide to use these three inch casters to help support the structure itself as well as make this gate feel as smooth as possible when you're moving it across the deck. However, when you're selecting casters, just make sure you're selecting ones that can be used for exterior purposes. And I'm actually installing these with stainless steel screws to ensure that these screws won't rust over time. Please keep in mind your railing height as well when you're doing this because I want a uniform gate system with my existing railing. So therefore I don't want this gate to be taller or shorter than the rest of my railing, which is why I chose these casters. Keep that in mind because you get a more professional look in the end. And I know I'm not going for perfection here, but I am trying to make this look as good as humanly possible. As for my existing top cap, I proceed to remove the excess material because we obviously need a pathway here, and I actually use that on the adjacent post, which you'll see shortly. Now, in order to make this a true sliding gate system, you have to anchor this gate to something that's actually stationary, which is why I'm using this post that is a perfect way to incorporate stability into the gate. Again, I'm using the same exact eye screws that I used previously, and I make sure to pre-drill all of my holes for this entire project just to ensure that there's going to be no chance of the wood splitting over time and the screws are properly supported within the post. Once the eye screws that are on your post are in place, you then proceed to moving over your gate and actually unscrewing the cap on the one side. Then go ahead and proceed to slipping that pipe into place and just make sure that the eye screw that's connected to your post is on the inside in between your other two eye screws, obviously. 
then hand tighten the end cap and guess what? We are secure. Now let's get to that other post. I obviously don't want this thing just hanging around feeling like it's not secure, so therefore I installed the existing top cap that I cut off previously on top of it and then actually ran it across towards the house and bolted it down to the house. You don't have to do this, but it did add some extra support. Then all I have to do is install my latch for a locking mechanism, and guess what? We are done. Some projects in life are just fun, and this is exactly what this project is. It's fun, and it's a perfect way to end such an amazing project that I've wanted to do for years, and the fact that this thing is fully secure and safe, well, as safe as can be expected for a large-scale hammock that's over a concrete surface. And as you can see, it is pet approved because Kona sure does love hanging out with dad on this beautiful sexy beast of a loft net right next to our beautiful sliding gate system. Oh yeah.